Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele. Today is July 21st, 2021, which makes this the third weekly video for the month of July 2021. And in this weekly video, I want to go ahead and talk a bit about the hexagon chart that WDGAN used. Now you might be looking at your screen and notice that this is not in fact the hexagon chart. Because before I talk about that a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about the differences between this chart, the square of nine, and the hexagon chart, which I just click over here, is right here. Now, I'm not going to talk about the differences that you might be thinking I'm going to talk about. I'm actually going to talk about shapes here for a little bit. Now, this program is called Ganzilla Pro. I have nothing to do with the program or the people responsible for the program. It's a free program that you can download. Just do a search for Ganzilla Pro, G-A-N-N-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L or for people outside the United States, it's G-A-N-N-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L Ganzilla Pro. And it's a really good program to use if you don't have it. If you're interested in WD Gan and his circle charts and stuff, this is a wonderful program that is free. So anyway, also, just as a reminder, always use your virus protection program for anything that you download on your computer. Okay, with that said, let's talk about the shapes here. If we look at the square of 9, this is essentially a two-dimensional square, obviously. It has equal sides right here. But if we imagine that this is a three-dimensional shape, it would be one side of a cube, and we'd be smack dab in the middle of that side looking directly at it. So imagine that we're directly over a cube, a three-dimensional cube. And I have a picture here of a Rubik's Cube that will help us. So you can see that the Rubik's Cube is sitting on a wooden table here. And imagine that we're above the Rubik's Cube looking straight down at it. And as a result, our view of the Rubik's Cube is that of a square. We see a square shape because we're above the Rubik's Cube and we're looking straight down at it. Okay. Pretty simple so far. Now, if we change our orientation to something very similar to what's in this picture, in other words, we're no longer looking straight down at the Rubik's Cube. We're looking from the side here at one of the points. We notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six edges visible here to us. And we now have a shape that's very similar to the hexagon right here in this chart. If you really look at a hexagon chart, you can see that it's a two-dimensional representation of looking at a three-dimensional cube at a specific angle. And that angle is from one of its points, I'm looking directly at one of its points. Here I have another picture here that's more precise where it's directly in the middle here. So the hexagon shape is a result of changing our perspective on the cube. Now another way to think about this is that imagine that we're looking at the cube from the top and we have that square of nine view. Well instead of changing our perspective, if we take the cube and manipulate it, in other words rotate the cube so that it's no longer flat, sitting flat on the surface, but sitting on its point, similar to this sculpture here. We're looking down at the top. We're still looking down at the, from the top, I should say, at the cube. But instead of seeing the square, like in the square of nine, we see the hexagon shape. Because while our orientation hasn't changed, the actual cube itself, its orientation has changed. And the result is that we're still looking at it directly at one of the points instead of looking at one of the flat surfaces. So the end result is that we're actually, we actually have the view of three of the sides of this cube as opposed to only one of the sides of the cube. So we can actually see half of the total cube, the three-dimensional total cube here. But that number three, one, two, three, becomes very important with the actual hexagon chart. So let's look at the hexagon chart here. 
we put a zero in the middle here and then we put a one two three four five six so that each side here because we have of course the six sides of the hexagon chart thus its name if we have one number for each side in our first circle right here and we have our point in the middle which has no value in this particular instance we come around to the six right there and then if we go for our second uh, second row or loop around the hexagon right here we start with seven but instead of just having one number on each of the six sides now we have two numbers on each of the six sides so we have two numbers here two numbers here two numbers there two numbers there two numbers there and two numbers there so that in this second row there are two times six or twelve total numbers now in the third row right here instead of having one two one or two uh, numbers on each side we have three on each side three unique numbers I should say because if you look we actually have one two three four or more accurately we have half of a number we have one number one number and half of a number here for a total of three numbers but anyway so we have one two three unique numbers here one two three so fine or so f just can continue around the whole loop right here this third loop around the hexagon chart and you'll find that you have 18 total numbers which of course is three times the original six so essentially what's happening is every single loop around the hexagon chart adds six more numbers to however many there was in the previous loop so if we look here something very interesting happens with the numbers on this chart if we come down this row right here we find 6 18 36 60 90 126 and then a very interesting 168 right here you might not be readily aware of this but 168 divided by 24 hours in a day is seven days in other words there are 168 hours in one week and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the seventh circle around the hexagon chart, the seventh shell, circle, however you want to think about it. Uh, seventh row. And we have the number of hours in a week, which is very interesting. Now, in the eighth one right here, we have 216, which is very, very close to, let's see, 216. Let's do it like this. 27 times 32, which is the orbital period of the moon around the Earth in days. We have this number right here divided by, or I'm sorry, not divided by, multiplied by 8 is very close to 216. It's not quite 216. It's 218 and a half, which shows up right around here a little bit but this brings us to the fact that it's the number 27 even the even number 27 times 8 that brings us to 216. so if we look at 168 divided by 7 we find that that's 24 right 24 hours in a day seven days in the week seventh row and very close to the number of days in eight lunar orbits right here in the eighth row but we find that we move from 24 to 27 if we divide by the row number so in other words 160 168 divided by the row number seven gives us 24 216 divided by 8 the row number gives us 27 which is 3 more 270 divided by the row number which is 9 gives us 30 which is another 3 more up there and then of course 330 divided by 11 gives us there I'm sorry divided by 10 this is the ninth row that's the tenth row so it should be 330 divided by 10 gives us 33 which is 3 more so the point is here, every time you have a number on this chart somewhere, like 124 for instance, 124, and you divide it by the row number that it's in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's in the fifth row, divided by 5, 24.8 plus 3 gives you 
times 6, the next row number, we have 166.8 right here. So we can figure or manipulate our position in the hexagon chart by the process of actually taking the shell number, the circle number, whatever you want to, th however you want to think of it, that we're in the number, divide the number, like 88 for instance, 88 is in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th shell, so 88 divided by 5, and then we add 3 to this number right here for every shell or circle that we want to add, and we subtract 3 for every shell or circle, like if we take 3 out of here, we get 14.6, and we're no longer in the 5th row, now we're in the 4th row, so we can multiply that by 4 and we get 58.4. So just a couple little things that I wanted to point out about this chart. Give you a little something to think about. I'm going to go ahead and end the video right here. But this, this chart right here is, I guess you can think of it as being softer than this chart right here. This chart's a bit harder. And I don't mean that as in harder to comprehend. I mean that as in think of like soft angles and hard angles. And then think of these two charts. Because the number three is very, very, very important with this chart. And consequently the number six and the number nine also. Whereas this chart, the number two, the number four, and the number eight are very important with it. As it has four sides. And there are two numbers on each side in the first row. But... That's a little deeper than I want to get into right now. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this weekly video here, and hopefully it gives you a little something to think about.